Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 2nd of October. India issues advisory for its nationals in Iran and Israel offers to communicate between both countries. Pakistan's inflation slows down but experts fear IMF conditions to raise wars. And Nepal issues heavy rain warning death toll from floods continues to rise. And now for all the details. Amid the heightened tensions between Israel and Iran, India on Tuesday issued advisory for its nationals residing and travelling to the West Asian countries. In a travel advisory issued by India's foreign ministry, it advised Indian nationals to remain vigilant, adhering to local security protocols and stay in contact with Indian diplomatic missions in both the countries. While Israel has been engaged in offensive operations against Hamas and its allies for months, Iran on Tuesday launched barrage of ballistic missiles at Israel, escalating tensions in the Middle East. The Tuesday's attack is the second direct attack by Iran on Israel this year, which they claim is in retaliation for the recent killing of senior Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah and Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh in Israeli military operations. Amid the heightened tension, India, which has friendly ties with both Tel Aviv and Tehran, has expressed concerns on the broadening conflict in the Middle East. India's Foreign Minister S. A. Shankar has said India can contribute as a facilitator of communication between Israel and Iran for de-escalating tensions. The remarks came a day after Prime Minister Narendra Modi also held a telephonic conversation with Israeli counterpart Benjamin Netanyahu and expressed India's commitment to support efforts for an early restoration of peace and stability in West Asia. Meanwhile, India's Foreign Minister S. A. Shankar once again reiterated that tensions between India and China will continue until there are forward deployments of militaries on the border. The latest remarks came on Tuesday in which Jay Shankar said India's relationship with China was based on agreements to maintain border peaceful and tranquil. He added, when the agreements were violated by Beijing in 2020, forward deployments of militaries took place, resulting in border tensions. Until those forward deployments are addressed, the tensions would continue and if the tensions continue, it casts a natural shadow over the rest of the relationship. He said, adding that the relationship has not been built for the last four years since the Galwan Valley clash. Earlier, Indian Army Chief General Upendra Devedi made a similar comment and said, while the situation at the LAC is stable, talks between Indian and Chinese diplomats have been opening options for both countries to resolve the conflict. The condition at border, however, is not normal. China is concerned. It has been intriguing our mind for quite some time. And we had agreements on how to keep the border peaceful and tranquil, and those agreements were violated by China in 2020. And uh, some of the because we have forward deployments of our militaries. Uh, uh, those there are resulting tensions and until those forward deployments are addressed the tensions would continue if the tensions continue it casts a natural shadow over the rest of the relationship so our relationship hasn't been great for the last four years and Pakistan's inflation rate has decreased, but experts warn that the upcoming implementation of IMF conditions could lead to increased financial hardships for many households. A report. Pakistan's annual consumer price inflation slowed to 6.9% in September, data showed on Tuesday, the lowest in more than three years. But experts believe the economic woes won't subside as the government seeks to implement IMF conditions that many households feared will hit them hard financially. The International Monetary Fund approved a $7 billion loan program for Pakistan last month that includes tough measures such as higher taxes on farm incomes and electricity prices. In my opinion, you will get a double loan with 7 loan. But the situation of Pakistan is not going to be able to get a double loan. Until the government, the establishment, the government will not decide that we will have to finish the corruption first. If we finish the corruption, then we can do a lot of Pakistan's resources. You can tell me that the price of the price is increasing every day. The price of the price is 
براہ راز اس کا بوجھ عام عوام پر آ رہے ہیں آپ دیکھیں کہ لوگ خودکشیاں کر رہے ہیں لوگ اپنا گھر بیچ رہے ہیں اپنی جائیدادیں بیچ رہے ہیں گاؤں دیہات میں لوگ اپنے مویشی بیچ کر بل پے کر رہے ہیں کیا یہ ان کو ریلیف ملا ہے Pakistan has been struggling with boom and burst economic cycles for decades, leading to more than 20 IMF bailouts since 1958. The South Asian country is the IMF's fifth largest debtor, owing the fund $6.28 billion as of July 11, according to the lender's data. Moving on. Bangladesh Foreign Advisor Mohammad Tohid Hussain on Tuesday said Dhaka wants good relations with Pakistan but cannot leave aside the 1971 issue. Addressing a media briefing, Hussain said Dhaka's relation with Islamabad can be better if the Pakistan government offers public apology for the atrocities which happened during 1971. Referring to meeting of Chief Advisor Muhammad Yunus with Pakistan PM Shehbaz Sharif, Hussain said the meeting was a curtsy where discussions about 1971 issue was not raised. We don't raise difficult issues in such curtsy meetings. When we will sit down for discussions, we will raise such difficult issues, he was quoted as saying by news agency UNB. Once part of East Pakistan, Dhaka has lukewarm relations with Islamabad largely due to unresolved historical grievances dating back to 1971 Liberation War. Bangladesh has long demanded an apology for Pakistan for war crimes, atrocities and the treatment of Bengalis during Liberation War. However, Islamabad has been reluctant over the demand. And ahead of Sri Lanka's general election, a member of former President Ranil Vikramasinghe's UNP on Tuesday said that the UNP and other opposition parties are willing to accept SJB leader Sajit Premadasa as prime ministerial candidate if he agrees to a common opposition alliance. Former MP Saman Ratnapriya, who is a close associate of Vikramasinghe, said the issue that the SJB wants the symbol of a common alliance to be telephone and no alliance is formed under a symbol of a partner of that alliance. Meanwhile, SJB General Secretary Ranjit Maduma Bandara said his party had officially informed Vikramasinghe to resign from the UNP leadership so that Premadasa could take over and go ahead with the forming of a common alliance. However, the former president has not agreed to step down. Sri Lanka's new leftist leader Anura Kumara Desanayake was sworn in as president in late September promising change as the island nation emerges from its worst economic crisis in more than seven decades. And a week after deadly floods in Nepal took lives of more than 240 people, the Disaster Authority on Wednesday issued warning of heavy rain and has requested people to be more cautious. At least 26 people are still missing and several have been injured in the accident. The warning comes after weather forecasting division said that monsoon winds are currently affecting the country along with a partial influence from a low pressure system forming in northeast Assam and surrounding areas of India. Meanwhile, cut off from the outside world since last week after roads and electricity infrastructure were swept away, locals in Panoti municipality face a bleak future. Most houses have been toppled by the gushing waters of the Roshi River which continue to roar. The disaster also claimed more than 2,000 livestock and hundreds of acres of land ready for harvest were wiped out. Paddy fields have now turned into barren lands filled with boulders and stones. Nepal, home to nine of the world's ten highest peaks, had already anticipated above average rainfall this year, with 1.8 million people expected to be affected. <laughs> तर यहाँ से धान और मौके अने आलू और सभी उजोरी हैं जो यहाँ पूरे खेत आ रहे थे और इसे सभी खोला छिड़ेरा केस है ना कारोरे चाहिए ना है अने सभी बागार बाय आए केबिन चाहिए That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.